back to Wargaming World and to another game of Nuts. So you may be new uh, to Nuts or you may indeed have watched the previous video which is uh, a battle here with uh, France 1940 where we had uh, a significant uh, victory for the Germans. And so we're going to start this game again at a slightly different uh, point. Now it's uh, going to turn event effectively into uh, an attack and defence game because the French have realised that the Germans are being uh, supplied and supported down the uh, rail track here. So the aim of this particular game is now to uh, attack the Germans and clear uh, their position by the station. Now a little bit different from the normal Nuts game is that uh, we have three PEF positions but two are already determined because the Germans occupied this building here beforehand and there's also a second marker down here. We just need to roll for the third. So let's roll for the third marker. And that's going to be a one. Uh, and so that's uh, quite helpful because that's going to be back here just by the station. So there you go, you'll just be able to see the German third PEF marker. So you can see that we have uh, a French uh, squad here by the uh, church and we have uh, one officer who has uh, some uh, characteristics. We've also got uh, some uh, of the Senegalese infantry in here and we're going to have the same character that we had from the last uh, game so I'm going to show that on the screen uh, shortly. But the French have to make a choice and um, we don't know whether the PEF markers when you get to them whether there's going to be any Germans there or not, whether they've withdrawn, so uh, we know what the objective is. Uh, the alternative for the French is they could go slow in this uh, particular uh, attack and see if they can get uh, reinforcements. Now some final pointers that we know from the previous game and indeed from this one that these units have a rep of uh, three. Now, I'm going to roll for the Germans when it comes to them. They were on four beforehand but we'll, uh, we'll roll to see if uh, they uh, uh, get uh, any improvements. And uh, we'll see uh, what reinforcements uh, arrive depending on how the game goes. I'm just going to roll uh, one dice for the uh, rep of the uh, Germans, not for each of the units. And with a six, it's going to be a rep of four. So uh, let's start uh, first turn, and uh, both uh, teams can operate. So start with the Germans, and uh, if we get uh, the rep or below, if we get two for that, they'll go eight inches towards uh, the French in cover. Uh, if we don't get any, they'll move eight uh, away and one they'll just stay put. So let's see the first one which is the first on the right hand side it just stays put. Secondly we'll have this one uh, in front of the station. That's two so it'll go towards uh, the French. Thirdly the one who's on the track. Uh, one so it just stays where it is. So the only German movement is here just right next to that building. So the French move forward by the church uh, and the mortar moving to get into a better position. New turn, and uh, the Germans can move, but the French can't. So again, we start on the right-hand side here, just to see uh, how far, if at all, they will move. And uh, two pass, so it's eight inches towards uh, the French, but in cover. In cover means that uh, the Germans are just behind that building, moving uh, back uh, towards the French, but uh, remaining in cover. Now the next one, uh, which is next to this particular building, uh, this time it fails, so he's going to go back into the original position. And finally the one that is on uh, the rail track. Uh, that now goes uh, eight inches closer. So there's the uh, unit, and that's the end of the turn. The turn. And uh, both units, uh, or all units I should say, can move. Starting with the German on the right hand side. It uh, can move uh, eight inches again. Uh, it moves here, however, that is going to uh, need a, uh, a test, so we're going to need to see whether the uh, Germans are here. So the Senegalese based in this uh, brasserie can uh, look out of the 
window where they are observing and we'll see a line of sight if it's uh, there. So let's have a look and see if they detect any Germans. Let's see if we get any fours. And we get one. Uh, well, with one, there might be something there. Uh, next time we test it, it'll be with 3d6 uh, using the two lowest dice. So let's try this one again, the one in front of the station, this one that's gone forward and then backwards. And it'll go back to where it was uh, just by the building. And the one which has come from the track, uh, lo and behold, uh, it goes exactly back to where it was. Well, it's uh, slow and steady, but the uh, French continue to advance. You turn, and now let's have a double check on the double there. Um, I will need to re-roll, but I do need to check and see whether the PEF get reinforcements. And so, uh, we do get reinforcements. Now, the reinforcements we're going to get uh, here is that we're going to produce another uh, PEF. And the reason is that it's a uh, an attack defence game, so our uh, investment level is three. We've got double three, so it needs to be that or level. Uh, sorry, level or lower. It is, so we can bring on another one. So let's roll and see uh, which... Uh, section it appears in and section one so we've got more troops uh, appearing by the track so you'll just see we've now got two markers out there so rather than uh, activating all the others when you roll a double uh, you just need to simply re-roll and uh, so we're fine for all of them to uh, operate but it's the French who go first so the French are splitting up. We've got a mortar team here uh, on the right hand side getting into position. We've got a machine gun team now entering uh, what is actually a Taylor's building. And then the major infantry is looking uh, to make a dash uh, across the other side of the road so it can start to engage and get towards uh, the station. Uh, the advantage here for the machine gun team is to give it uh, some kind of uh, fire platform uh, to cover as the advance goes uh, across towards those buildings. So we now have uh, four uh, PEF, starting the one on the right-hand side, which is on the edge of the buildings. See whether this moves forward, which certainly will uh, give its uh, position away. And uh, yes, it does. Now, it moves eight inches. There isn't really any cover to go to in order towards the enemy. It looks a bit odd because it goes right into the open towards this building. But you have to bear in mind that Actually, the enemy doesn't necessarily know that the French are in this building at all. So uh, it moves across here and we need to take a test and see whether we can see it. Remembering it's 3d6. Uh, but again, that's only a 1. And just as before, uh, it is. Uh, uh, it, it might have seen something. Uh, it doesn't. We don't particularly know. And uh, next time we'll roll with a 3d6. Uh, but uh, crossing that road... Um, there aren't necessarily German forces there. So the marker that's just next to this building. And that stays where it is. We've got two markers on the track, so I'll roll them, roll them both uh, together. Uh, one would actually withdraw, but it can't go any further back uh, than it is. The other one moves forward, which will get it towards the uh, corner, just the gap between those two buildings. And it's now a new turn. Right, so it's another double. We're going to have another PEF appearing, so it would appear that there's going to be a huge amount of German forces, which uh, inevitably in this particular game means I'm going to bring on some French uh, reinforcements at some point. But let's see where that appears. So which section? Now this time it's uh, five, which is uh, in uh, the buildings over here. So there we go, there's the fifth marker. And we roll again in terms of the turn. So this time we have the French can move, uh, but not the Germans. Now the French are activated, so the very first thing we're going to see is whether the uh, Senegalese infantry spot uh, the Germans uh, for a third time. Okay, 3d6 uh, again, and this time they most certainly do. Now, are the Germans in a defensive position? We add one to this dice because it's an attack a game and yes it is we need to have a look in the uh, enemy defense table now I think we've got defensive a defensive position here um, which probably just means back in those buildings so I just need to double check but what I need to find out is 
how many and what size. So uh, via the new supplement rules, I'm going to start with 2d6, uh, the rep being 4 for the campaign, but it's actually 0. So what do we get for 0? Well, with 0, I think we get uh, 1 German squad in the building. So I'm going to relocate them back in this building here. They've been uh, detected, so then we need to see about uh, the firefight. Let's just see the size of the uh, German unit. So we've got a machine gun. We'll have um, obviously a unit with some uh, uh, NTO, etc. But we need uh, we've got five men plus one d6 for the size of the squad. That's seven men. So there we go. Uh, the Germans in position. So we've got the French, and uh, see the Germans are in sight. So the first thing we need to see is who wins the insight test, and uh, most certainly it's the Germans. So we've got uh, four rifles, so I'm going to fire one at each window. Uh, now the machine gun, I think naturally it would fire uh, at the upper windows because it's got a greater uh, uh, position. But it won't really know which one has the machine gun in it. So I'm going to roll for which window. So it's a question of luck about whether it uh, fires at the uh, uh, French uh, machine gun. So the machine gun's going to fire. I'm going to say uh, if we're on the right-hand side, upper right, one, two, three... And it is, so that's not the one with the uh, machine gun, it's the rifle. So let's see uh, to hit, uh, and that's a uh, two the machine gun. That's uh, 4d6 uh, for damage, and uh, the uh, figure is, uh, it's uh, knocked out. It's not killed, but it's certainly knocked out. Rifle firing at the top right window uh, is uh, two hits again, the result of that. Uh, is a kill, so that's knocking out the machine gun team. And unfortunately, that's my character too. So uh, yeah, he's uh, killed outright. It's not even going to uh, help him in terms of his uh, attribute of being a bit of a poser. Uh, I'm afraid he's uh, completely gone. Now firing at the lower right window. That's two more hits. The outcome of that one is uh, uh, nothing other than it'll be a duck back. Finally. Down on the right hand side, uh, that's going to be uh, just one, and being just one, uh, he will uh, return fire, which is going to be the only fire uh, returned here. However, uh, one thing we're also going to do, and I'll look in the rules for how we do this, one of the actions is going to be that we're going to uh, take the uh, machine gun, so we don't lose the machine gun here, uh, we'll just have to see how we uh, get it back uh, up and running. So I'm going to return fire, I'm going to return one of the uh, men firing with the machine gun team, needing threes, and that's a one, and it's in cover, so therefore uh, it will uh, return fire. That's in cover, it returns fire, and uh, that's just a one, um, so it means that uh, the original person who was firing here in this bottom left hand corner will duck back. So effectively what's happened there is that the men on the bottom floor have ducked back, taken a bit of cover, uh, upstairs, while well, some accurate machine gun fire, we've had uh, one man uh, out for the count who's wounded and another killed. So we're now going to have a look and see how we uh, get back the machine gun uh, in the next action. Now it's going to take an activation next turn to get back up and running in terms of the machine gun, but what we need to test is uh, the will to fight. Right, uh, will to fight, really simple stuff, is that we're just really looking at the unit which is in the uh, upper level. Uh, they have to because they've got somebody killed and somebody knocked out. They're not at half strength though because they know they've got people downstairs but we need to see what we do in terms of passing uh, this with a leadership of three. Okay let's take a look and uh, we've got one in terms of passing so we'll carry on. Now if we remember it's uh, still the French activation so we have three units effectively. We've got this mortar to fire. We have uh, a machine gun team which has now moved upstairs here and uh, also uh, the officer is going to call for the mortar to fire uh, in this direction now and we need to work out where we're going to move in terms of these troops and whether they're going to dash across the road and uh, get over towards that garage. Right, so to double check and what we're going to do now is the leader of this infantry group is going to call in the mortar. So this is the process. So uh, the mortar doesn't have a line of sight here but it doesn't matter because uh, it's going to be called in by the leader for its activation, uh, but we just need to see and roll on the table to see if it comes in this turn. We want a low number. 
That's not what we've got. So with a four, that means the fire is going to come in next turn. So we've had the activation from the French unit here. We called it in, it comes in next turn, so that's the end of this turn. Okay, so uh, this turn, unfortunately, we can operate uh, for uh, the Germans. Uh, we can't for uh, for the uh, for the French. We have nobody at uh, four, so uh, we need to carry on uh, with this one. Uh, but following this turn, I uh, might well have a look and see about we get some French reinforcements. Now, uh, we have our PEFs, but we've also got here our uh, non-player figures. So we need to roll. Uh, they've appeared. They've started fighting. But we need to understand what they see uh, in terms of their role, whether it's a patrol, uh, whether it's a defence or attack. So we need to roll for this. OK, we've got a 1. Now with a 1, this unit believes essentially that it's on patrol. So it's stumbled across the French uh, and engaged them. But what do they do as a consequence? So we need to uh, check against the uh, rep and we have 2. So the consequence of that is that it uh, stays put. Uh, it uh, takes cover and uh, turns to a defensive mission. And just to add, there's nothing in sight because the uh, infantry have fallen back in the building, so they're simply holding their ground. Let's test the PEFs, one to the left-hand side there, and that's going to move uh, 8 inches. That's this one here. Uh, it's going to move 8 inches in the direction of the French. It's going to go in exactly the same place as this one did, so it's going to move behind that building. We've got one PEF in this corner here, and uh, it stays where it is. One to the back of this uh, of the station, just on the corner. At double six, it's going to retreat back to its original position. The one that remains on the uh, track, it passes two, so essentially they would swap positions. So I'll leave the figures where they are, they're just markers, so they stay as they are. So at this stage, uh, the French are holding their position, but as they have now uh, got in contact with uh, the Germans, it's uh, quite obvious that they need some reinforcements. So uh, to extend this game, uh, we're going to have uh, the French arrive, uh, add some uh, armour into the uh, uh, equation here, and uh, also some, uh, uh, some transport and infantry. And if we get uh, a double uh, on our roll, uh, moving forward for uh, potential PEF reinforcement, all we're going to do there is to bring on German armour to counter it. And the new turn. And in fact, without realising, I've just uh, rolled the uh, the seven I would actually need uh, to look for uh, reinforcement, so that's fairly timely. So, um, in this situation, uh, we're going to bring in some better quality French, I think. So we're going to have uh, an activation of that. Uh, we're going to move the uh, French reinforcements in. We're not going to move uh, these units here uh, because their rep is three. Uh, however, we are going to see whether the uh, mortar comes in. So we've got uh, a Schneider P16 uh, and uh, we also have uh, Citroen trucks coming in. Uh, with infantry support. Now before I land uh, the mortar I just need to see if this unit actually moves so we just need to take a roll of that as the uh, uh, non-player figures. Now it's a defensive game or they're, they're following a defensive strategy after the last turn and we have one on the rep. The result of a one is that it simply stays in place uh, it can't fire at anything because it doesn't have a target. So the mortar found fires three rounds to the rep of the uh, the officer who's called it in, so that's a three, and let's see what the result is. And uh, we've got uh, two at the end of that. Now, so we've got two, which means it's uh, on target. Now you look at the blast the blast radius, and I have to confess I'm not absolutely sure for a 60 millimeter French mortar, but I am going to say it's going to hit the uh, units that are here in this. Area. So I'm going to discount the two up there, the one at the back, and everybody in there, I'm going to say, is within the uh, brass, uh, the blast radius. OK, so, right, I've found it. It is uh, five inches, so it is that group. So we've got uh, half a dozen people there, and the way we work it out is that 
I've also found a table to tell me that a 50 millimeter mortar would have uh, an impact of two. This is a 60 millimeter, so we're going to say that. So we add two uh, to the roll uh, when we have this. So we've got uh, an impact on all five figures. So let's uh, work through uh, which ones we're looking at. So we've got the two um, machine gun uh, people first of all. Uh, we add two to the roll of each of that. So that's a four and a five. So they'll both uh, be out of the uh, fight. They're not killed, but out of the fight. The officer with a pistol is killed. And the three remaining riflemen, uh, one is killed. The other two are uh, out of the fight. So uh, those three must now take a will to fight test. They're down to uh, under half uh, numbers and uh, certainly that's going to be uh, uh, out of the game. So that's the first time I think in uh, a game and a half that we've had something that's uh, worked for the French. We've had some reinforcements beginning to uh, come in. Uh, I, I didn't roll for them to come in. I did say right at the start that I was going to bring them in anyway but it was uh, fortunate with the uh, seven which would have prompted me to take a test. Uh, but here uh, also uh, we've got a 60 millimeter mortar. It's a uh, hit bang on in the uh, building area and uh, you know caused uh, quite a, a devastating impact and the group there have uh, routed. So we still need in this turn to have a look at the PEFs uh, of the remaining four German markers. So let's take a look at the marker which is behind that particular building. We pass with two, so in fact it actually moves into the position that's just been vacated. Uh, we haven't got any line of sight, so we don't need to test that, so uh, we'll move uh, the figure into this position. So that's where it finishes. We've got this uh, marker here. And again it stays still. One back in the corner there, next to the station. Uh, that's a two, so that advances. It moves uh, further forward. Uh, ahead just in front of the station and the one which is still on the tracks uh, just uh, stays exactly there so uh, that's the final position and the end of a good turn for the French. Right we've got uh, new reinforcements coming in so we need to test what the rep is of both the uh, tank or the armoured car really I should say and the unit coming in on the uh, transport. First of all for the uh, armoured car, so we're going to say one, two, three is a three, four, five is a four and a six, we're going to say it's a leadership of five. Uh, but again, just like all the others, it's going to be a three. So with the troops that are on the uh, transport, I'm going to do the same thing. Red dice is going to be the rep of uh, an officer on there and uh, blue dice just going to be the same with the infantry and just the same again. Uh, we're going to have a leadership of uh, three, or a rep, I should say, of three for both of them. With all of that uh, uh, sorted out, uh, let's see uh, who's going to be activated in the game. So uh, it's going to be the French first, and uh, all of the units can be operated on all sides. So a number of things taking place at the moment. So we've moved our French units up here on the, uh, on the road. And then uh, we've got a couple of things happening there. So first of all, we've got the unit here have moved forward and picked up the machine gun. So uh, I'm going to say that that's uh, their activation. This unit are moving here to the windows. Now they would test to see if they see uh, the Germans in the uh, building over here. But uh, I'm going to actually do this first. This unit was the one that was already in play and uh, now it's going to fire on it if the Germans indeed uh, appear and then afterwards we'll see what we do with this unit. Six, see what uh, happens in terms of spot. So it's a two, yes there's definitely contact. See if it's, uh, well let's first of all see what, what might be there. So it's a, uh, a one. Means we look at uh, the standard reinforcement table. Okay, one of the things I think we need to determine first uh, before we look at the reinforcements is whether when they become the non-player uh, figures essentially whether they're going to be on patrol, defence or attack, what they think there. That does make an effect on what reinforcements come. So let's take a roll for that. 1, 2 is patrol, 3, 4, defence, 5, 6 is attack. So therefore, when this unit comes on, it will perceive that it is on attack, at least as we determine reinforcements. We roll is against a rep of 4. 
and we get one. Okay, so if there were um, uh, if there was uh, some reinforcements in play, we'd get nothing. But in fact, actually, they're out of play uh, now. So therefore, we'll get one squad here with a support weapon because we've got uh, vehicles uh, appearing. I'll make that an anti-tank unit. Squad that's going to come on board. We get five men. We get uh, two junior leaders. Um, uh, two junior NCOs, I should say. Um, we'll get uh, an anti-tank team of two, but we need to see. We've also got a, an LMG in there within that uh, that unit. But we need to see how many additional men we get as well. We get another three, so essentially we've got eight infantry, uh, one of which will be carrying a, a light machine gun. We've got a an NCO, a junior NCO. And then we've got our two anti-tank, uh, a rifle team, I should say, of two. So as we were before, but also we've got this anti-tank team just behind that car. So now we need to see who sees each other first in terms of firing. So let's test the uh, insights test, and uh, it's the Germans who see first. It's just the same as I did before. I'm going to roll to see whether the Germans fire at which particular window. One, two, three, it's the front window. It's not. It's the back window, which is the one with the machine gun. The German machine gun first. And that's one hit. Because it's machine gun to machine gun, it's not outgunned, it's a one, so it means the machine gun will return fire. French fire. And uh, that's uh, going to be one. It's that the Germans are in cover also, so they're both uh, in cover in this situation, so the German returns fire. This time that's two hits, that, that's two, so it's a hit. With four hits. Uh, then uh, we've got the machine gunner is. Uh, out of the fight. I've got three more rifles, uh, so I'm going to fire one here in the top left hand window and I'm going to fire uh, another one each at the infantry down at the bottom right. there. I'll do the firing all together, uh, so uh, we'll do the uh, dice here, so these two together, the blue is the French at the side, so that's a miss. That one is one hit, so it's going to be a return fire, that one is a hit. So first of all we look at that one which is a rifle there, which is the hit, because right. it's a rifle, and it's the rep, uh, so uh, he'll just uh, drop back. So both the Senegalese and the uh, other French infantrymen return fire. Uh, it's a hit uh, for the Frenchman, and uh, with, the, uh, with the other one, with the Senegalese, it will prompt the other rifleman to return fire. That happens with the hit. Uh, to two, it's just uh, they will uh, the rifleman will drop back. Yeah. Uh, this guy will drop back uh, here. The German uh, returning fire uh, is a hit. The outcome of that uh, will be the drop back. So, in this room here, the Tenegles have dropped back uh, into cover. However, up here we've got somebody knocked out, so we need to have a uh, will to fight right. test. They're not uh, at half numbers, and uh, they're fine. So lots of action here so far uh, with the French. We've had our uh, vehicles move up. We've had engagement with uh, that unit again there. Now the last unit to be activated was this one, so therefore it's going to call in the mortar again and see whether it can do the same kind of damage at the same time. Call in the mortar and uh, let's see when it might arrive. Six, uh, certainly not for uh, some time I don't think. That might well be two turns. Yeah, unfortunately that's two turns. And that's a really quite a good rule in that uh, it could have fired straight away or one turn, but now that, uh, that mortar isn't gonna be uh, too useful. So it's not like when you play a game and you can use a mortar each turn or things like that. So uh, the uh, French have done their turn. We now move over to the Germans. Right, we need to test our remaining three PEFs. First one makes a move. He moves here into cover, and back over here, and that one uh, withdraws again back to uh, that back well, corner. Currently on the track, uh, it just stays where it is. At the end of a, uh, a good turn, let's see who's activated in this one. Uh, both parties, however, we've rolled a double. So therefore what I'd said is that if we get a double and we look at reinforcements, then uh, what we're gonna bring on for the Germans is a vehicle. So brought on a 222 and uh, we'll see what happens. We've got to re-roll. Remember if we get a double, uh, we re-roll, but the Germans have uh, armor on the table. So let's re-roll, see who can uh, operate. Uh, the French can, uh, but the uh, Germans can't. Uh, so uh, it's gonna be a French uh, move. The only thing I'm going to roll for is to see whether the 222, the leader in it, I'm going to roll for their rep 
and just to see whether uh, you get a six, and if I get a six, they'll have a leadership of five. Let's just test that. I got a two, no it isn't, so their rep is actually three. So a few things happening here. Uh, we're going to watch uh, the P16 fire in a second, so it's not moved. The uh, Citroen truck has moved past it, and uh, it's in position now, and it's going to uh, have the infantry uh, jump off in the next turn. In this unit here, some of the infantry have moved forward and are now in sight to the Germans over on the left-hand side. Here, uh, with the infantry, we've got two at the uh, windows and underneath that they've moved forward. So we've got actually four rifles firing from the windows again, so we have more interaction for the Germans. We'll see who fires first in a second. In this building, the infantryman is, uh, has swapped over the machine gun from uh, the man who was uh, injured. He can't fire because it takes a whole turn to do that. But one uh, rifleman can fire, so we've got a, a shot from there. And we still have to wait for the mortar because it was two turns before it could uh, fire onto the Germans over here. So let's work out the rifles first and then I'll do the vehicle right at the end. I'm just focusing on this uh, soldier it's going to fire at one of the Germans with uh, a rifle and uh, we're just going to uh, see who fires first between the two of them. So uh, it's the German first. Okay let's see if the German hits. Uh, so that's uh, two so that's a hit. Let's see the result of that. Uh, it's a four so the rifleman's knocked out. So next to him C you see him go down so we need to do a willed to fight test and we get a one but it's uh, below uh, half in the numbers now, so he will uh, uh, leave. So uh, we lose the potential machine gun in that building. You see that result there? So when the man went down, that means uh, we're below 50%. We got a one uh, in terms of our rep, so uh, the machine gun, uh, or the machine gunner, uh, leaves and uh, uh, looks to fight another day. So I've got the uh, four Senegalese infantry firing at the Germans yeah, so we've got the machine gunners, uh, another rifle, and actually I'm going to fire one of the anti-tank team. Let's see who has the initiative. And in fact it's the French. This rifleman fires at the anti-tank uh, rifleman, and he gets uh, at one Germans in cover, so therefore he returns fire. And uh, that's uh, a hit. So with the direct hit, let's see what happens to uh, the Frenchman. He's uh, knocked out. Now I'm going to test whether the other man uh, fires and hits with his shot before I do a, a, a will to fight test, which I'll need to. I'll take a roll there. So uh, it's a one. The German's in cover, therefore he fires back. German fire. Um, and that's a, a one in itself, so uh, the Senegalese will fire back again. He fires again with a 1, and that means the German will uh, duck back. So now realising the man next to him has gone down, we need to take a test and see whether the Senegalese will stay, and yes he will. So this is the action that I've described. Uh, the man stays there uh, by the window to continue fighting, and uh, we just need to do the Senegalese that are in the bottom two windows. So firing at the machine gun team. Our first shot is uh, just a miss. Rifleman, a miss. German machine gun fires back, and uh, it's a hit. Four dice, and that's a kill. So we've had a kill in this room, so we need to take a will to fight test. Fifty percent strength, uh, but uh, nobody passes there, uh, so uh, I think they're going to break. Right, uh, and therefore we need to uh, remove all three of these figures. So that was disastrous. Uh, so despite the fact that the uh, French started off, they've lost the initiative in terms of fighting both uh, in both of these uh, buildings, more or less. Got three rifles that are going to fire here and see what happens. So I've got uh, three French rifles firing at two Germans, but let's see uh, who's uh, better in terms of the uh, initiative. And uh, it's uh, one each, but the French moved, so the Germans will go first. French are in the open in this situation. First rifle fires, and uh, we've got a one. That's just a hit. And three uh, with a hit it means that they'll uh, duck back. German fires, and uh, that's uh, a straight hit. Hit. What happens there? And much like his friend, he uh, ducks back. One Frenchman fires, and uh, it's a one. The Germans are in cover, so therefore they will return fire. Return fire is just a miss, and therefore the French will fire back. 
and that's a hit. It's all the German uh, is that uh, he's knocked out. Let's take a will to fight test for the Germans in that unit, and they pass. That's fine. That's been a, f a very uh, poor session for the uh, French there, but we just see uh, whether the P16 can. Uh, Get a bit of glory back and uh, fire at the 222 and see how we go there. Certainly, uh, this turn's shown the difference between an I go, you go uh, kind of game and uh, uh, the uh, nuts version because the French really would have just uh, fired on the Germans there. But uh, instead, because of the uh, reaction and who fires first, the French have certainly come out uh, worst. So, anyway, let's try and resolve uh, the firing between the P16 at this end and our uh, 222 at this end. I'm going to say uh, that the 222 has three dice because the uh, P16 is buttoned down so uh, therefore we're looking for threes with the roll in terms of the insight test and uh, it means the Germans uh, will see first. So the Germans go first, the rep of the gunner is three and so that'll be uh, a one on the table. So one's a hit. We need to determine whether it is going to be the turret, one, two, or the hull. And so it's the hull. And the armour piercing is four uh, to the armour of two. So what we need to do is to see uh, how we roll uh, against uh, that with 2d6. And that looks like uh, one hit, so I think that's disabled. And that's it. Uh, it's uh, knocked out and certainly uh, it's advantage to the Germans. That's the end of a terrible turn for the French. Let's see what happens uh, next time round. Uh, both uh, can operate, French going first. Right, very much last chance for the French, I think. Uh, so we're going to start off uh, the unit uh, dismount from uh, the vehicle. Right, and in a desperate measure, uh, the French are going to make a dash across this road get forward. We know that there's a mortar going to fire, so I'm going to work that out before we get any kind of reaction at all. So we are going to do the uh, the mortar, uh, but the French are going to run out uh, first of all. We're going to try and move fast. I'm not going to roll for every figure here, I'm going to work out an average, but the way of doing it is to try and pass your rep and you can go uh, half your original move. So that would have been uh, 12 inches in total. It's not that difficult to do. Let's just work that uh, all in one. So uh, effectively uh, more than half of the French are fairly nimble, can move 12 inches. Uh, the four of them that are slower Going to be uh, uh, open to uh, fire, I suspect, from the 222 on the road. Well, certainly going to be a good enough target for the Germans, but let's see uh, if the mortar uh, makes any impact. Rolling 3d6 against a rep of 3. Uh, 2 means that it's going to be on target. Well, as we did last time, we've got a blast radius of 4. It landed on target, so it's effectively it's going to be the four figures that are inside the front of that building. For a hit, uh, the factor is two in terms of the mortar, so essentially, um, rather than... So the normal rep would be if we had a four or a five, they'd just be knocked out. So in actual fact, because the factor is two, uh, the Germans need to really roll a one uh, not to be... Uh, uh, not to be uh, knocked out or killed, etc. So anything other than a one, really. Uh, the blue dice are going to be the machine gun team. So uh, the machine gun team are knocked out, and the other two are uh, are killed. So we need to take a test for uh, the morale of the other unit, or the rest of the unit. So this unit actually are now at uh, half numbers, because we have five men left. We've got three who are knocked out and two killed. So... Uh, Although they're in cover, they still need uh, a good roll here, and uh, they've got a f they get two uh, in the end, so I think they're going to stay put. Yeah, with the French uh, still being able to go, there's one person I haven't tried uh, here is the uh, the lone rifleman in here who will fire again at the uh, at the Germans. So uh, uh, he fires, and uh, that's just a one. I'm going to man in cover who will return fire back at him, and misses. He returns fire. And uh, it's a one, so the man who originally uh, returned fire to him, uh, he will, uh, uh, he'll be knocked back. So I've now moved the man uh, up from the uh, higher position, uh, back behind the building. Now the two, two, two will see uh, the French going across uh, the road. It's not really a test about who fires first because uh, they're not going to fire on the two, two, two. Let's just see its effectiveness. Right, the French in the open with threes. And uh, that's uh, definitely a hit. Uh, there are actually four men who can be hit there by the uh, coax machine gun. So uh, uh, one of them is, is two dice. 
and as a consequence uh, one is killed and three are knocked out. And as I remove uh, this man as killed we need to take a will to fight test of the remaining units. The unit are not at uh, half numbers so threes is what we need and we've got a one. Nope the French will carry on. So whilst I've done this but I'm now going to uh, test the PEFs that remain. Firstly the one that is by uh, the building and uh, that moves eight inches towards the French. The F is at the back there, it follows the same path as two units beforehand, so moving into this position. Second is back here, uh, stays where it remains uh, on the, uh, by the track, remains where it is as well. So the situation of this game is that the French are getting to a fairly desperate point. Uh, they have uh, one and a half sections effectively, are now going to advance onto the building here. This uh, German unit has been uh, really depleted. However, we do have a PEF behind it, so this is going to be possibly a well, probably a minimum of a, of a section. If indeed there is anything, remember of course we could test it and there's no, uh, uh, no German there at all. We do have, uh, remembering the objective is over here, the, uh, the station, and uh, we've got another couple of PEFs there. Again, there's no guarantee that there'll be uh, figures, but uh, uh, one thing that we do know is that we've got the 222 which is holding a defensive position now so it becomes very very difficult for the French. New turn and the French uh, can move uh, but not the Germans. It's actually been a really good turn for the French because they've been able to advance towards that building and uh, the Germans can't see them and so we've uh, just got the infantry closer and uh, we've just got one bit of fighting uh, to do, or one bit of firing I should say, because we've still got this rifleman in here. He's going to have a, a shot and see uh, how he goes, but that's going to be the only firing of this turn. Just shot at the uh, German rifleman and miss. Turn is fire, and uh, it's uh, just a, a one cover, so he returns fire, and it's a one, and the uh, German is in, uh, in cover, so he will just duck back. So it's a new turn and we have the French again and the Germans can uh, act also. Now if you remember we'd identified that the uh, unit here, uh, although it's the uh, non-player unit, uh, they were on the attack. So when we do a roll here about what they do, uh, we're going to do it with attack in mind. But we need to determine what the 222 is it's doing. 222 on patrol, defence or on attack itself. It's on attack along with the other units. unit is on attack. And uh, let's see what it does in terms of its rep. So we have a 1. So with a 1, uh, this unit is going to uh, attack the French as it advances. Um, with a 6, it'll do so with a charge. Uh, with a 1 to 5, it'll just advance towards it firing. So that's uh, a normal advance and uh, shooting, so we'll have uh, a point where we'll have to see who uh, fires first and then some melee, I think. So this is the uh, outcome. The Germans have uh, scrambled over the, uh, the wall, got in contact to the French, they're going to do so. I need to work out some firing. The unit behind it, I think it'll see it. So I think there's uh, also uh, a reaction to that and some firing there. Uh, and I'm fairly sure that I might get this wrong in the process as we work towards the melee, but uh, let's see what this looks like. And it could be more or less the uh, culmination of the game. So uh, let's have a look at that. Before I do the rest of that fighting, I'm just going to uh, move some of the other units. So I'm going to see, first of all, whether the 222 is on patrol, on attack, or what have you. And that's in a defensive uh, uh, role. Against its rep of three, we get two. Uh, we'll now move to an attack. It's got, it's got two, it doesn't have an enemy in front of it, so therefore it's not outnumbered, so it will move and it will advance towards where that uh, fighting is taking place. That's where the 222 will finish up as it advances towards the uh, support of the infantry. The F that's behind that building, let's see what uh, it does, and uh, with one it stays where it is. Right off, let's see what the PEF in that corner does, as again it just stays where it is, and the one that's on the track, it does exactly the same. So. Remembering that the game is the objective is to take this, uh, we've still got two PEFs here, but I think the game is going to be uh, sorted out really over here, and let's have a look at uh, how the uh, fighting and shooting uh, takes place. First, first, who's got the initiative for shooting? And uh, it's the Germans. I've got seven Germans firing with the initiative, 
and effectively uh, it's going to be because everybody's in the open uh, one will be a hit uh, as well as two so we just need to make sure that in the rolls it doesn't turn out as uh, two fives and sixes uh, so that's a one so that's one hit that's one out of one one out of two so that's a, a miss two out of three three out of four four out of five five out of six and six are hit in total and we have six french here so uh, we'll work it on a one-to-one -one basis so six french uh, we have uh, four of them are okay uh, but uh, one is killed and uh, another is knocked out they have a will to fight us before they fire back and we get a one they are in the open and um, so they're not in cover let's just check that right they're not down to half uh, numbers so they will uh, fire back and I also think that some of the units uh, advancing here will uh, will fire also simultaneously with different coloured dice so uh, with that uh, two of the French have hit for the Germans is that one is killed and uh, one would return fire to do a will to fight test but let's have the rifleman who fires back and it's a hit the result of that uh, is fine so uh, he will be, he will drop back because um, it'll have been the second time it's been uh, fired Fire with two men of that second unit that are moving in to the Germans so let's see how they go on and uh, one of them hits so that uh, is the German is fine uh, now I might get the rule wrong here because he's been fired or he's already been firing at somebody else so I just think uh, uh, he's fine in that situation so I don't think we do anything else other than doing a will to fight test for these Germans after they've seen somebody being killed will to fight test and they'll carry on we're going to do the melee and now it means we've got a two to one uh, advantage for the Germans so here uh, it's the rep against each other so it'll be four against three both of them have uh, uh, a knife or what have you I'm not too sure about the officer who just has a pistol there but I'm going to say in each situation uh, it's four against five remembering of course that the uh, Germans have uh, a numerical advantage each time so let's uh, do the first fighting so first time uh, it is three against three so it's equal but we've got another German uh, attack on that individual, so we we'll do it again. So, in fact, the Frenchman wins there. So this man uh, is uh, beaten mm -hmm. out of the fight. Now the other two remain and they continue to fight. But what we do is we lose one dice each. So rather than five versus four, it's four versus three. And in this uh, case, uh, it's the Frenchman who's knocked out. Next two there for the French and uh, so the first man is killed second uh, fight the German knocks uh, the Frenchman out and finally a draw first time round the Frenchman is knocked out and with that I think uh, I think that's the game I think there's no real way for the uh, remaining French unit uh, unless we get reinforcements uh, to advance and take the objective and that's it that's been a really good game i really enjoy playing that i'm really trying to get uh, to know the rules and uh, i think it's great uh, where you can play the fact that actually although it's a, a solo game here it's uh, it's not predictable and uh, although uh, it's been uh, you know, uh, a struggle really for the french to uh, advance i think they've had uh, lots of opportunity to uh, do well, have brought in uh, reinforcements, uh, the mortar has done very well on these buildings but unfortunately uh, they've uh, they've really uh, struggled to advance and get uh, get across the Germans. One of the massive differences uh, right at the start is when we have uh, uh, the rep of the forces because uh, three playing four makes it very difficult so uh, in other games I think I'll uh, roll and uh, work out and see if there's a, a variance so I might uh, sort it out for each individual uh, section and do that and um, it makes it quite complicated when you start to do it 
but uh, I think it'll be a, a, an advantage. So finally, just for me to say thanks very much uh, for watching. Really uh, appreciate all the uh, uh, subscribers to the YouTube channel. It'd be great uh, if you can uh, join if you've not already uh, subscribed. And any thoughts you've got, then please go to the Facebook group. Uh, so uh, it's uh, Nuts Man to Man Combat, and uh, put your thoughts and ideas in there, and it'll shape how we uh, have uh, future games. And uh, also there's loads of great stuff on there. There's also uh, a version for Upgrade. You can just uh, go onto the uh, group and download it and uh, get yourself uh, playing uh, the games uh, yourself. So thanks very much and we'll see you next time.